Hey everyone, it's Jeremy with Teletone. We just released our first full featured comprehensive synthesizer called Oracle, and it comes with some tutorials that you may or may not have known about. And I'm hoping that you will do these with me. So maybe you wanna take a second and get in front of your computer and load up Oracle. I think that it will help the education process if you do this with me. So let's jump in and look at those. So I'm not sure if you would find this on your own or not, but if you go into this preset browser menu and select user, you as the user may have noticed that you did not save these in, in here. Uh, these are things that I included to help you kind of learn the basic functions of Oracle. And they're meant to be done in order. So let's start with number one. So you can see we have an A and a B side. The B side is turned off. A is lit up. This little one is lit up, but there are instructions on this preset. Drag movement one onto pan A. Okay, well, what is movement one? Well, here's this movement label. Here's a one and then pan A. Well, here's A and where's the pan? Here's pan for A. So let's drag movement one onto pan A Let's see what happens. Now, right away, you can see that now there's a ring around this and an X. Uh, an X will delete what we just did. And the ring is to show you visually what is happening sonically. Let me show you. So we have some movement going back and forth, left and right. Let's go to number two. As I click two, you can see that B is now turned on. That's kind of a hint. Drag movement two onto pan B. Okay, well movement two, I've already turned it on for you. And we want that to go onto pan B. Here's pan for B. There are differences between movement one and two. If you look at this rate knob, that's gonna change. So the speed for this movement two is a little bit different than, than what we have on A. Let me turn on just B for a second so you can hear it. So this one's a little bit faster. And now we have both of these movements going on at the same time. Let's go to number three. Drag movement three onto tune A. Okay, well, here's A, here's tune. Uh, let's do what it says. Three onto tune. And you're gonna notice that that little ball that's moving, that little circle is moving a much shorter distance on this. That's because I have the depth turned all the way down, almost, well, almost all the way down. It's sitting at 1% where these were at 75%. And so this kind of gives you a little bit of this like a chorusing effect. So already this is much more interesting than what we had a minute ago. Let's go to four. Drag movement four onto cutoff. And you might have noticed that when you changed, uh, this filter lit up and it was turned off. You can turn that on or off by clicking the label. And we wanna drag movement four onto the cutoff knob. So let's do that. <laughs> And so once again, we can hear what's happening. You may not know what a cutoff is in the context of a filter, but this will help you to see and hear what the cutoff knob does. It's a filter that's moving from the high frequencies and filtering it out lower and then coming back up again. Let's go to five. Drag movement five onto sub. You probably noticed that this section lit up. That's a hint. There is a sub knob right here and we wanna take movement five and drop it on here. Let's hear what that sounds like. Now, you may be able to tell that this movement sounds a little bit different than the other ones too. That is because it is a different shape. These other ones, we are using a sine wave shape and this one is using a square shape, which kind of gives it a more jaggedy sound. There is no smooth transition between the two points that it's going between. 
it's going to be uh, the high or the low point, and it jumps back and forth between the two. And then it's going a different speed as well. Number six, add chorus and saturation. Uh, you see these light up color and character. We have phaser, chorus, flanger. You turn them on by clicking the button and then turning up the mix. Let's add some saturation. So there's some chorus and saturation. Let's go to seven. And you'll, you might notice these knobs jump. That's because this is not actually saving what you're doing into presets. It's, it's just a guide to follow along. Drag movement six to noise. All right, you know what you're doing now. So let's drag six onto noise. And it's kind of doing what you would expect it to do by now. You know how this works. And let me turn up the noise knob a little bit more so you can hear this better. So now we've added a sine wave to the noise. Let's go to eight. Load MS-20 freeway for A. Okay, that may not make any sense to you, but let's look for clues. A, we're doing something, we're loading something for A. Okay, here's A, and we're gonna load something. Well, this looks like a place where we could load something. So let's click here, and we're looking for MS-20 freeways. Well, right off the bat, I can see there is a synth called MS-20. So let's click that. And then if you scroll down and look, you'll see something called freeways. And it's uh, not an accident that I am asking you to load this one. Let me show you why. Here's what it sounds like. And what I wanted to show you here let me turn off the other oscillator and the movement and all the effects. So now we have just the source playing by itself. This is something where we captured actual real analog modulation uh, to put in as a source. So there is nothing else going on on the instrument. That is just the way that this source sounds. And we have a bunch of these that self-modulate. And so this I wanted to show you that sometimes if you load up a preset, you turn everything off and you still hear movement happening. That's because we have some of this baked in analog modulation uh, happening inside the sources themselves. We'll turn everything back on. Let's go to number nine. Load Pro One Feedback for B. Okay, well you guess this is gonna be a similar process. Here's B, here's the source. We want Pro One Feedback. Look around, Sequential Pro One. It's sitting right behind me over there, the Pro One. And we want feedback. So here's what these two sources sound like with all the movement and everything that we have going on. So you can hear some weird stuff happening. Uh, let's keep moving. Drag four onto HP filter. Okay, well, we know what four is. We may not know what HP filter is. Okay, well, here's a filter. This says cut off resonance HP filter. There we go. We're gonna drag it onto there. And we can see it's moving as expected with a sine wave. And then we hear it does a very different thing than the cutoff knob does. 11, draw in a custom shape for four. Okay, well, we're already on four, but custom shape, we don't know what that is yet. Okay, mod wheel here are some built-in shapes. Doesn't look custom. And then we have this pencil tool. Well, this is where we are gonna draw in a custom shape. And when you open this up, it's gonna show you what you already have selected. But you can also draw in here any shape you want. And it really can be anything. Let's go back to this jaggedy sound. 
X out. And so we've drawn in a custom shape for movement four. Let's go to number 12. Turn cut off all the way up. Okay, let's do that. And I could have put another step in here that says turn it all the way down, but let's just do that now. Let's turn the cutoff. We hear what it does when we turn it up. Let's hear what happens when we turn it down too. Okay, let's go to 13. Under envelopes, click filter. Okay, well we haven't talked about envelopes yet, but there is, you see this label envelope on A and on B, and then this icon where we can link or unlink them. I'd like for you to keep them linked for now. And so under envelopes, we need to click filter. Where is filter? Well, it keeps lighting up whenever I drag my mouse over it. So here it is right here, filter. And that is all we're doing on this one. So let's go to step 14. Move amount slider up and down. Okay, filter, here's amount. So let's move this slider up and down, see what that does. Well, it does something very similar to what this does but this is for an envelope. And an envelope is a way to shape a source. And you can do that either with the amplitude or we, we call it volume for simplicity. You can do that with the volume or you can do it with the filter itself. And so we are shaping the way that the filter is either going to fade in or out. Number 15, amount ADSR sliders up and down. So we're almost to the end here. And basically all I'm saying is I want you to mess with these knobs. This stands for attack, decay, sustain, and release. So let's see what happens if we turn the attack up. We can hear that the filter is starting with all the high-end information filtered out, and then it's slowly opening up. And now let's kind of do like the opposite of that, where we have a fast attack Let's turn sustain all the way down. You don't have to understand what that means right now. And then let's mess with the decay. So this is a big part of shaping sounds or shaping the type of sounds that you're wanting to create using the envelopes on the filter side. This is gonna be very useful for you to learn how to use this. And then on the very last step, I have turn knobs, have fun, save presets. So now you can take everything that you have just done on your own and start messing with depth and rate, mess with different shapes, you can make custom shapes because as of right now, if you've gone through these steps with me, you know how to switch out the sources and shape the movement of just about anything that you see here. And so at this point, just have fun with it. If you happen to come up with something that you like, then you're gonna go up to the cog menu and click save preset as. And don't be afraid to save over this. You may not uh, ever open these again, but also if you make a new name for it, it's just going to make a new preset. You can add your own tags and eventually that'll make it a lot easier to find things that you've made because you can sort them by type. And then you're gonna hit save and that's it. So I hope that was useful for you. Oracle is out now. We're really excited to hear what you make with it. <laughs>